Okay, why not Kumba speak? Then I'll come on. Mm -hmm. Call now Kumba start. I'm Wow, if you can, but let's. Hold on, it's, it's, maybe it's going to be hardware issues. It's a hardware issue. It's hardware. Mm -hmm. I think I can check one of the IT guys is connected. Mm -hmm. Hello? Uh huh. Well, don't take local calls. Don't take local calls. Wow, well, uh, opposite India. Wow. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you uh, to everyone who joined us online as well. We're just waiting here for the presentation to be shared with us. And thank you all so much for being here with us for the ICEP the Gambia launch. While we are sorting the technical issues, um, I would like to um, welcome you all. I'm Vivia Edegar and I'm the Deputy Director of ICEP, the International Society of Substance Use Professionals. It is an honor to take part in the, launch, the ICEP um, Gambia today. Um, I really wish, and I know all of my colleagues uh, and, and friends here yes. online, we would really like to be online there with uh, we would like to be there in person with you to celebrate this great occasion um, and hopefully one day we will all get to meet i would like to thank all of our esteemed speakers from national and international organizations and the government for their presence today and let me begin by thanking each and every one of you who is online but also in person in the gambia who has been actively involved in the development of the national chapter, especially um, our friends and colleagues Alasana and Mamudu and, and their colleagues. It's a, really a pleasure for us to work with them. And my colleague and national chapter coordinator for the African region, uh, Michael Brody, who's also here with me. And I are very grateful for your excellent work uh, and the efforts in bringing together the drug demand reduction workforce in the Gambia. For those of you who are new to ICEP, we're an international membership organization with over 23,000 members from around the world. And, and our members work in prevention and treatment and recovery support. ICEP was established by a group of international organizations and experts in drug demand reduction that were brought together by the US um, Department of State's Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs, INL. And I would like to thank INL for their support and especially our uh, colleague Bill McGlynn for his expert advice and, and for his support in the development of our national chapters around the world. At ICEP, we provide drug demand reduction professionals with access to training and credentialing, with opportunities to build networks, to share knowledge and learn from each other's work and experience through our website, through our virtual and in-person events and through our national chapters. I would like to invite you all to our upcoming conference 
which uh, will provide our members and drug demand reduction professionals around the world with opportunities to network, to access training and credentialing, and also attend plenary sessions. So together with our partners, we're organizing um, our upcoming conference in Abu Dhabi, and the conference will be held from May the 12th through May the 16th. I would also like to invite you all to become ICEP members and join our national chapter in the Gambia if you haven't already done so. ICEP the Gambia also has a website section. So if you go to our website, which is www.icep.net, you can click on national chapters and ICEP Gambia and you will find the latest news um, and hopefully also the, the recording will also put up there and any, um, you know, any resources and um, any articles that might be relevant to you in, in the Gambia. And um, as our um, local uh, representatives um, and um, our national chapters undertake the work that we do at ICEP, but at the national and local level. So uh, like they organize conferences and events. So there's also regional conferences that are organized through our national chapters. So some of you might have joined us for our ICEP at South Africa, Africa Regional Conference a, a year and a half ago. They also run trainings together with our national and international training partners. They promote research and they unite the training uh, the treatment prevention and recovery support workforce in their country before i conclude i would like to share the list of countries that are part of the ICEP family with you let me just see so you can see the group of countries that you will be joining Excellent, great. You should see now our list of current national chapters. So at the moment we have national chapters in 28 countries and um, you can see here I've put in bold all the national chapters that are in Africa, the, the partner organizations that you will be working very closely with. So we really look forward to working with you on future collaboration and looking forward to also seeing you hopefully at the conference in person in May, and yes, welcome to the uh, ICEP National Chapter family. And I would now like to introduce my colleague, Michael Broby, uh, who will uh, be moderating the online portion of this event. Thank you all again for joining us today. Thank you, Livia, for the introduction and really appreciate your kind words there. I think what we want to do now, we want to see if our colleagues on the ground are able to connect with us again. Um, Alasana, how are things going on on the ground there? Are you able to... Yeah, connect? it's good now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Yeah, it's great. Good to go. Yeah, fantastic. So, I believe... So um, we're going to go ahead. I want to hand over to um, to um, go through your opening remarks, and then we'll go through the rest of the program. Thank you. Hey, yeah, I'm almost start. Is this slide ready? Michael, hello. Hi. Click on from beginning. Can can you can you see our PowerPoint? Yes, yes. Um, can everyone see it? Okay. If you can just you can just nod your head. That's fine. Fantastic. Yes, we can we can all see it, uh, Alasana. Do you want to just um, click from beginning and enlarge it? Go from there. Okay. They can see it, right? Yeah, I think you can see it. They can see it. See it. Honestly, see it. See it. 
Okay, from beginnings. Mm -hmm. If you go to the top there, there's an arrow after home. If you click on that, it'll bring you to the main one. Yep, that's it. And then from beginning there. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see the slides. Okay, sorry for the technical delays. We are about, uh, am I good to go? Um, yes, you're good to go now. Yes, go ahead, please. Okay, I apologize to the global audience and those of us who are joining us here in person for the technical delays. It was uh, issues beyond our control. Our deepest apologies and for the delay time, we want to start now. My name is Mam Rujalo. I'm the General Secretary for ISOP Gambia. I, in my capacity as the, as the General Secretary, I'm pleased to welcome all of you to this launch today. Um, I'll begin with an introduction. Um, today, this launch will be followed by a webinar on will be uh, it will be immediately followed by a webinar and the reason why we are here we want to create our launch objective is that we want to for us eyes of gambia we are launching to start uh, cultivating a dynamic team of substance use professionals who are equipped with the right knowledge and skills to undertake evidence-based substance use prevention, treatment, and recovery support in initiatives in the Gambia in line with ASOP's vision and mission. We want to grow a crop of youth, a crop of substance use professionals who will advance the cause of substance use prevention, treatment, recovery in the Gambia. But we want to do it in line with ISOP Global's visions, uh, vision and mission. Well, before we go further, we wanted to take a step back to explain who we are, how we came up here. Um, we are the Family Therapy Association of the Gambia. Uh, FTAC is a community-based organization. It was registered a, a decade ago. And the Family Therapy Association of the Gambia, FTAC, is the host organization for the, for the, for the, for the for ICE of Gambia. So um, FTAC is the host organization for ICE of Gambia here. Um, but for those of us who, for those of our colleagues, especially those who are joining us new, who don't know uh, the, who don't know about ISOP, ISOP is a global organization that provides knowledge to the core of, uh, to people who are engaged in reducing substance uh, who are in the demand demand uh, drug demand reduction field so isop has a has a structured program isop was initiated in 2015 and uh, it it was registered in 2016 and it provides a platform to the international substance use professionals so that they'll have a, a platform for them to further their uh, their work. That's uh, that's the reason why uh, ISOP was formed. Now, why ISOP Gambia? As I said earlier, we started out with uh, FTA, the Family Therapy Association of the Gambia. But along the line, we thought of uh, how to streamline our efforts. What do we do to have a proven uh, and evident an evidence based strategy? so that our work we don't want we didn't want to reinvent the wheel we just wanted to realign the wheel so that we can have the same results so when we made our research when we made our study we realized that iso global is has the strategy it has the mechanisms in place so instead of reinventing the wheel we said we want to join that platform that is available so that it will make our work easy iso has a structured approach to drug uh, uh, they have a structured approach, and our idea was to connect that structured approach so that we can apply it locally. To take a global, uh, it is a global phenomenon that they have. We wanted to apply it locally so that we can we can uh, attain the results in line with the ISOP's 
vison and uh, and miso how did it happen so, so talking about the transition we said we began as a community based organization along the line as i said we wanted a structured approach and that is why we are here to streamline our efforts in line with that of iso global what have we done so far um since we attained the prestigious status of ISO national chapter in, in the summer of 2021, we did something. We did some um, registration processes. And in the summer of 2021, uh, I, in, this, in the summer of 2021, ISO Gambia was uh, certified. Then we were, we were allowed to operate after having gone through some, uh, some steps. But since then, we've done a little, uh, we've done some things. Uh, we wish we would have done more. But um, well, uh, after this launch, we are hoping to, to, to get more things done. But so far, we in October, uh, October 31st, 2021, we met as ISOP Gambia National Chapter and we launched the chapter uh, locally. We had a conclave. The, the reason for the conclave was to allow for all the bodies of ISOP, the executive body, the general body and the uh, and the advisory body. We have an advisory body. We have a general membership and the executive. The conclave allowed all of us to meet, to share ideas, and for the members to get to know each other. Because mostly we were working mostly virtually. We were working mostly virtually, and this allowed us the opportunity to be able to um, to be able to uh, get to know each other. Okay. Sorry. Uh, one minute. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, so what are the next steps? Okay, I, are you are you all hearing me clearly? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, all right. So as I saw, now since after our conclave, we that brought all the organs of ISOP Gambia National Chapter, as I said, including the executive the general body and the uh, and the advisory body uh, after that event we last month we held a workshop for about 50 teenage students of the glory baptist international school is an international school located here in the gambia on march 1st or uh, uh, earlier this month on march 1st 2022 we organized a program a workshop for them on substance use prevention 50 students benefited and we have a reportage on that event uh, on our website. Now, what are the next steps for Eyes of Gambia? At Eyes of Gambia, we intend to Skype up our outreach efforts in schools and communities across the country immediately after this launch. This launch was, uh, we, we are regarding this launch as, um, as an introduction to give us an opportunity to be introduced to the global platform and to the Gambian uh, and to the local uh, and to the local platform. So what we intend to do is that after this launch, we'll spike up our activities in communities. We'll do we'll do uh, we'll do community acti we'll do activities in schools. We'll do activities in um, in, in in at risk locations and areas at at risk areas where we think that there is the need to go and in, engage the people in substance use prevention. The components are substance use prevention. We know we have prevention, treatment, and recovery. But at the initial stage, we want to work on prevention. Then uh, at the latter stage, we'll go and include the other components that is treatment and recovery. At this point, as we speak, we are currently working to equip our IT lab. We have an IT lab located in Serapunda a place called Serapunda, West, uh, Serapunda Safidin. We want to equip that place. We are working on equipping it so that our members can be able to take part, can, 
our members can be able to uh, go on to the ISO Global line, Online Hub so that we can have, we can increase our capacities. We want all our members to be capacitized so that they will be able to fully contribute to the fight against drugs. We want all the mem our members to take online courses to be certified so that they can go out, so that all of us together, we can go across the length and breadth of the Gambia so that we can work on how to reduce drug, how to attain drug demand reduction in the Gambia in line with ISO's global agenda. That's what we are here for. Okay. Um, well, at this point, I want to thank all of you, those who are in passing, those who are here in passing with us, and those online for uh, for the opportunity. And once again, I, from the bottom of my heart, I want to apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, it, this shows that we are novices, but along the line, we hope that we will really master the art of, um, we'll still master the art. I hope you are forgiven. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Mamadou Diallo, for your words. Uh, very kind, and we appreciate and understand the technical difficulties we have occurred on the ground. We're just grateful that we can we can be here and uh, attend this launch with you and those on the ground. So thank you very much for your opening remarks there. Looking at the program, what I like to do now is I like to um, introduce the next speaker. This is um, Madam Komba Matron. She is representing UNODC based in the Gambia. And she's the coordinator of the West Africa Network of Central Authorities and Prosecutors. Um, I had the opportunity to engage with um, Honorable um, Kumba um, a couple of weeks ago in a meeting with her and also Alasana. So really grateful that um, um, she's able to attend on behalf of UNODC to give a few opening remarks. So I'd like to hand over the time to her for her to share her opening remarks. Um, Madam Kumba, I'll hand over to you now, please. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Good afternoon, distinguished guest. It's an honor to be part of the launch of this ISOC program in Gambia. And I wanted to personally thank ISOC for uh, bringing us uh, on board on this. UNODC, which is the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, is working on drug, pre uh, drug prevention and treatment to promote the support evidence and human rights treatment policies, strategies, and intervention to reduce the negative health and social consequences caused by drug use disorders with a strong focus on low and middle income countries. The, we have a section that is called prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation section, which is based in Vienna, but has different people working in the field offices. And I'm currently representing Mr. Anselm Senou, who's um, the head of the drug section, drug demand section that is based in Burkina and who couldn't be with us today. So that, that section emphasizes a comprehensive integrated health-based approach to drug policy so that we can reduce the non-medical use of drugs, relieve suffering and decrease drug-related harms to individuals families, communities, and society. It is critically important that individuals with drug use disorders receive nothing less than what is expected from, from any other chronic disease. The patient's dignity and the need for voluntary treatment are essential when it comes to drug dependence, treatment, care, and delivery. The International Society of Substance Use Pro Professionals, ISOP, provides a unique and multidisciplinary platform from the professionalization and exchange among substance use prevention and treatment professional, and thus it promotes the prevention, uh, the, the development of a trained, knowledgeable, and effective international network of experts 
who support high quality Sorry. Over the past years, UNODC has been collaborating a lot with ISAC. I'm glad that Lavia mentioned the upcoming seminar that is taking place in Abu Dhabi on May 12th and 16th. But there were some other conferences that were organized in Brazil, Mexico, and Kenya, which resulted in strengthening the network of professionals that are working in the field of substance use prevention and substance use disorder treatment. ISO and UNODC have had a meaningful collaboration and a fruitful work that were accomplished together. It demonstrates that combined efforts in strengthening the international workforce on drug demand reduction is needed to reduce the human and social cost of substance disorder, particularly among vulnerable people. Scientific leaders are, as well as policy makers are gathered here to share their knowledge and exchange ideas. The need to promote the training of personnel in, in the treatment after care rehabilitation and social reintegration has been already emphasized in the Convention on Narcotic Drugs. And since then, numerous resolutions have been um, following, highlighting the need of these service providers to be well trained. I am glad that we have on board the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, who has been doing a lot in this capacity in the Gambia through the drug demand reduction program that they have, which is led by Mr. Saidi Bach. Um, it is always good to work directly, and this helps us achieve many of the sustainable development goals, notably the target 3.5, which is on strengthening substance use prevention and treatment, 3.4 on addressing and promoting mental health, SDG 5 on empowering women and girls, SDG 16 on reducing all forms of violence, and XCG 16.2 on eliminating violence against children. Youth empowerment is crucial here, and I am glad that Mr. Diallo, in his um, opening speech, mentioned the importance of empowering youth with relevant and factual information. I cannot thank enough uh, ISAC for putting us on board. And I confirm that UNODC is ready to accompany ISOC in their activities in the Gambia. Thank you very much. And we remain available for any other questions or um, queries you might have. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, Honorable Kumba, for your kind words. Really appreciate that. And, and I know um, UNODC, um, I know, um, as an organization, especially for Africa, we've been very keen to to work and collaborate with UNODC. So we're re really pleased that you're able to join us and participate um, in this launch. So thank you very much for your kind words there. I'd like to now introduce my good um, friend and colleague, um, Bill McGlynn. Um, Bill is um, working for INL, which um, Livia mentioned earlier. Um, and I know is um, the U.S. Department of State Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs. They are a key partner for us at ISIP and they provide us the support we need um, for us to do the good work that we're doing. Um, and Bill, um, he's um, the senior advisor within the Office of Global Policy and Programs relating to drug demand reduction. And um, I had the opportunity to engage with Bill in the lead up to the launch. And um, we were able to work with um, Alasana from its inception phase to where we're having the launch. So really pleased that I can um, introduce you to, to Bill McGlynn. And uh, Bill, what I'd like to do is hand over the time to you to give some opening remarks. So thank you. Michael, thank you very much. Uh, I particularly want to recognize the senior representative from the uh, Drug Law Enforcement Administration, Mr. Sadiba, and also uh, praise the remarks of General Secretary uh, Jallo 
uh, it's really great uh, what you have achieved. And uh, we were, were very familiar with the excellent work GAMI is doing across all areas of drug demand reduction. <clears throat> I also feel like I've gotten to know Alasana a little bit in our um, uh, getting um, together for this event. And it's been a pleasure to get to know him. Uh, the, um, my uh, office, the Office of Drug Demand Reduction at the United States Department of State um, has focused very heavily on the area of uh, training for uh, of evidence-based practices. In part, that's because um, <clears throat> worldwide, virtually everywhere, um, there is a uh, need to bring in the most recent um, effective practices and research to deal with this growing problem of drug use. Um, and I think um, we, the working together has been uh, absolutely crucial. And what I think the, um, our friends with ISA, the International Society of Substance Use Professionals, have done is create an amazing organization to, for a home for all of us who are trying to work on this issue. I think without question, um, we're very sensitive of how hard it is to make progress and feel that you are having an impact on this very serious problem. Our children, our colleagues, our, uh, it's just, it's a, it's a very uh, important thing. And I think together though, we can, we can make a much greater impact. And as um, uh, Mamadou has said, not so much recreate the wheel, but to uh, align the wheel and learn from each other. And that's what I think ICE and Global is doing such a great job of. <clears throat> I think um, also the national chapter that you have created will be a huge uh, step in making this more effective. Um, I think this is one of the most innovative parts of ICE, the, the way a country brings together its national efforts to um, be as effective as possible to develop policies, share experiences, identify uh, ways to do a better job in this whole area. I can say right away, I think what you are doing in the Gambia National Chapter already to make use of the online training is really uh, remarkable. I think the idea of having the center at Sari Kunda Safi and Dean is such an innovative idea and uh, I think we're, we'll, we'll really look forward to your insights on how to uh, make best use of the online training, which I think will really expand our uh, ability to make these uh, best practices and uh, more effective uh, tools available to a much larger, larger audience. <clears throat> so I guess uh, the other point I wanna make is the partners that are on this call as well particularly the UN Office in Drugs and Crime, which is a, a really uh, sort of, if you will, the high command of best practices and uh, standards of, of effective treatment and prevention and other uh, activities is really important. Um, we are really proud and, and honored to be a, a close associate of the African Union. And I can't say enough about the great work of Dr. Abel Basutu and his team and the African Union in leading efforts in this. And, and finally, I, I think we have uh, particularly distinguished uh, leaders in the field, Vivian Evans, who is a, a worldwide uh, recognized authority on these important issues uh, to be part of this, helping us all do a better job. So with that, let me just close and, and thank you for letting us be part of your launch of the ISIP national chapter for the Gambia. I uh, wish you great success, and we are uh, looking very much forward to cooperating with you in any way that you see that is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill, for your wonderful words. Really appreciate that, and, and thank you for acknowledging um, Honorable um, Usman, who's joined us as well. Really appreciate that um, a representative from the government of Gambia is able to, to join us, so really appreciate that. So. Thank you very much, Bill, and, and also for acknowledging African Union and Dr. Abel. I know um, Livia mentioned um, you earlier as well, so thank you very much. Um, looking at the program, uh, I know we had um, Livia listed to give some remarks, which um, she did earlier. So thank you very much, um, Olivia. And um, I know um, there was a reach out to national chapters about doing a video. 
um, as you know, um, were leading up to our Abu Dhabi conference. So our national chapters are actively engaged in doing that. But um, as the national chapter coordinator for Africa, I do um, express an appreciation for ISIB the Gambia from the national chapters in Africa that you can join them and become part of the family. Um, especially in West Africa, we have a, a group of uh, national chapters developing, which started with Nigeria and Togo. And now we have the Gambia involved and hopefully we'll have your neighbors, Senegal, involved um, with um, ISIB national chapters as well. So we're really excited for that. Um, and from my side, um, I'm just really grateful for the good work um, the Gambia has been doing, really pleased with um, the enthusiasm from the national chapter. And um, we feel so honored and privileged to be here to support you in whichever way we can for this launch to, to be successful. So what I'd like to do now is um, I'd like to hand over the time to um, Alasana Biruma. He's the executive director for ICIP the Gambia to give some opening remarks. And then after him, there'll be a summary of the initial opening part of the launch before we go into the webinar section of the launch. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to ISOP Gambia National Chapter. We thank you all for honoring our invitation. I am here by presenting myself as Alasana Drame, the executive director of ISOP Gambia. I can send my appreciation to Bill, Michael, Lydia, and Olivia. It has been a very, very, very difficult journey, but we are able to overcome our hurdles. I thank you all. Let me welcome you to the Eyes of Gambia. I can say Eyes of Gambia engages in sensitization and outreach activities geared towards the attainment of drug demand reduction within, within the communities that we operate in. I can hereby say that now Eyes of Gambia operate across the Gambia throughout the entire breadth of the country. Our vision, our vision is, is, to, uh, is to become a well-structured institution striving towards drug demand reduction in the Gambia through prevention, treatment, recovery, as a way of ensuring that the population remain vibrant, ready to move forward, the national, the national development agenda forward. Our mission, so uh, these are just few uh, uh, issues that we just raised because we know the time constraint, we cannot go on everything that is in that is on Eyes of Gambia webpage, but we can just elaborate the few things that we can share with our colleagues uh, in Africa, Asia, and Europe throughout the world. Our mission is to reduce the drug demand. Our mission is to reduce the drug use and abuse in the Gambia through education, which we have already started uh, with a school not far from where ISOP is located, our designated office. Uh, the school is called Glory Baptist. We went there through and did some educational activities and sensitization. Undertaking this collaboration with the government, we want to do our work in a multi-sectoral approach with the government, civil society, organizations, and other stakeholders. And we can thank our colleagues, especially the NGOs who have honored our invitation, which are locally here with us here in our hall. We can say thank you all, and thank you for honoring our invitations. Our focus areas. Currently, I can just say uh, to 
our ISOP family members that ISOP Gambia is currently mostly and exclusively focused on prevention. But along the line, uh, as we are now launching ISOP Gambia, our invitation is open to everyone. UTC trainers, you are welcome to join us and undertake this uh, work of prevention and saving lives. Of course, we can say that we cannot sit by and look uh, families, gain, uh, families being ripped off. We all can do the little things to help somebody to gain a good life. As our focus areas, uh, we have been yearning and uh, explaining our situation to them, uh, ISOP Global that Yeah. Uh, as as I uh, as as national chapters, our focus areas include sharing information of best practices for drug prevention, treatment, and rego and recovery initiatives. We can apologize again for the technical difficulties. Yes. We intend to achieve these targets by building community coalitions. We just was in uh, Nairobi. I did this training in community coalition and being at the forefront of pushing for drug prevention, treatment, and, reco and recovery initiatives. Well, how can you achieve uh, this? You have to engage the policymakers, especially our drug, drug uh, our national, especially our national drug law enforcement agency of the Gambia, which are part of the policymakers. We have to engage the policymakers in partnership that will lead to a drug demand reduction in the country. Establish a good working relationship with drug demand reduction of the Gambia. It works to it works toward drug demand reduction in the Gambia. The membership uh, membership to the ISOP Gambia chapter is open and voluntary. Our organization structure consists of an executive body, the general membership, and council of elders, starts with an ad advisory role. And I think I have to shorten my remarks here. Uh, for further information about Eyes of Gambia, we are at your disposal. You can contact us. As I am the executive director of the Gambia National Chapter, Alessandra Drabe can be reached on this email, alasana70 at gmail.com. I thank you all for your kind attention. I can hand it over to my colleague who can. Okay. Michael. Michael. Yeah, Michael, can you chip in? Yeah, um, well, thank you. Thank you for that. I know you had yeah. some technical difficulties, Alasana, but um, thank you for going through that. Thank you. Um, what we'd like to do now is um, Mamadou, I think according to the program, to hand over the time for you to give a summary um, so that we can then move on to the webinar part of the launch. Thank all of you for the uh, for being with us. And um, as we go on with this program, um, we've learned a few key things. There are a few things that excite us. Listening to Kumba, we were very happy to know that they are, uh, they are ready to support Ice of Gambia in its objectives, in its ideals, so that we can attain drug demand reduction in the country. We are very happy hearing that. Uh, listening to William, uh, Bill, uh, what he said is right. 
there is a need for more training. There is need for training to train the um, drug demand, the global drug demand reduction workforce, so that um, the uh, the objectives of reading our societies to rid our societies of uh, of drug abusers and drug users, or to to kick for so that people. will keep the habit to be successful. People must be equipped. Those who are doing, doing the interventions, those who are doing the intervention, they must be equipped and very interesting for us. Because we believe that it is only with the proper training, with only with the uh, with the proven methods that are already existing, that, that can be, that people can leverage on to to have a, to, to, to succeed in the fight against drugs. We live in West Africa. We know what's happening in West Africa. In Sierra Leone, we've seen the documentaries, we've seen the, the, the things that are happening there. We are surrounded. We are surrounded by a catastrophe in waiting. There's a catastrophe surrounding us. What do we do to prevent that? What do we do to save our, what do we do to protect our borders, to protect our societies, to protect our children? Mr. Drami has spoken about societies being ripped apart. Families are being ripped apart. When you have one family member who is on drugs, the consequences that happen from that, the snowball effects that happen from that, they are many. So it is really, there is a need for a strategy and a concerted strategy to be able to, uh, for, the, for the fight against, for the fight against drugs to be strengthened and to be institutionalized. It is at our level, we, that's what we wish to attain. We want to, government is doing a lot of things. I will take this opportunity to recognize the drug law enforcement agency of the Gambia. They are doing a lot of work. They are doing a lot of work that they are doing. So at this point, we want to recognize what they are doing. And we want to reassure them that we want to be partners in development. We don't want to be stomp any, we don't want to be stumbling blocks. We want to be partners in development so that demand, drug demand reduction will be attained in this country. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, let me tell you. Sorry, let me chip in here. I think our colleague, uh, we want our colleague to make remarks but before we proceed to the webinar. That is a drug law enforcement agency, public liaison officer. Please leave here. Can you try to unmute him? Yes, he just needs to click unmute and it should work. Thank you. I hope you can all get me. I hope you can get me. Can you get me, Claire? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. And I'm very much delighted to meet with some faces that are very familiar, um, starting with Bill. It's been a very long journey, but um, thank God we are here today again seeing each other right from the AUC meeting. Not forgetting our good brother Abel Basutu. Dr. Basutu for your continued commitment and support to the Gambia. And my very good sister, Moda, for her selfless commitment and sacrifice for, to ensure that there is a balanced, integrated, multi-sectorial approach. Equally, Livia, Michael, Evans, and my two brothers, both Alasana and Mamuru, we are very much delighted to be part of this. I was given a statement on behalf of my director general to deliver, so that's why I had to bring back to their attention that yes, uh, we were invited and um, there is a statement that we have to make. Because this is a journey that has not started today, and it's a journey that will complement our effort as the lead government institution mandated by law to implement a balanced, integrated, multi-sectorial approach between supply suppression and drug demand reduction. DG extends his salutation and is unavailable not being with us here today. At the same time,
I think we may have lost connection. Alessana, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I think we may have lost um, connection. I think there's a little bit, a little bit of difficulty with Sherry Bar connection. We can proceed. Yeah. Do you want us to proceed or do you want us to give him a few minutes? Oh, no, no, I think I have my remarks. We can, we can give Seruba a few minutes, one minute or two. Okay. If that is okay. Yeah, I think he, he's just come off now. So maybe he's going to try and rejoin and then hopefully that will fix things. Um, but. Okay. Um, I think with that, maybe we should carry on, and then if he comes back, we'll give him a chance again to carry on with his remarks. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, I think um, within the program, it's over to you because we've got a, a new speaker. So I'll hand over to you, Alasana, um, to introduce the person. Uh, Olivia, I think I shared the program schedule with you. Okay, I think uh, I can uh, just invite our uh, student to come over and do his presentation. Name Jibrin Jai. This slides. I think. <laughs> so screen. Will. So I think um, before um, the youth speaker does um, the presentation, um, we're going into our webinar part of the launch to be focusing on in substance use management. So um, that's the webinar part of our launch that we're going into now. Hello, Michael. Hello. Yes. Can, you can hear he me? start? Yes, yes. You yeah, can. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead with the presentation. Yeah. Just Sorry, we had a disruption with the internet. I had to connect using the, our router. Yeah, Seriba, you are back. You can continue. Yes, thank you very much. And sorry about that. Um, it's one of the unfortunate things that could happen. We had to quickly put up our backup. So as I was saying, this initiative that we will also appreciate the support of our partners uh, looking at the United States Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs. Special recognition and commendation for Bill McGlynn. He did a lot with regard to the training that was conducted in the Gambia. You could all recall that we had a year long training in the Gambia on the universal treatment curriculum. And this training that was conducted, participants were carefully selected from fields that we believe will add value to what we do. The participants were psychiatric nurses working or heading hospitals across the country. Equally, we ensured that the composition included the Department of Social Welfare. Social welfare officers or people that are rendering psychosocial support services to people. We had two reformed addicts, one who is a media practitioner, and recently, Kumba, they were busy on another international meeting. We had a training for a football club that this guy has set up, and he is training youths 
setting up a football club, and he's a media practitioner for one of the most reputable uh, media house in this country. That is the Foria newspaper, Mahmoud Mbenga. And you also have Lamin Hassan, who also works with the SOS Children's Village. Just recently, over this weekend, if you go to our page on Nakomag on Facebook, we have Instagram and Twitter handle, you will see these activities that were there. And even today, when we were in one of the schools at Barkote, they were there with us. We had also the religious leaders represented in that training, being from the Christian Council and then also the Islamic Council, and then also key CSOs that we've been working with. Why did we do this selection? We did this selection of people with multi-sectorial background because we were believed that when we are to provide any intervention or treatment services, having an integrated case management system will help. So therefore, we want Bill to know that that training has added value to what we do in this country, and these people are highly, highly being utilized. Anytime you meet with them, those who are in the hospitals will tell you that, yes, we appreciated that training. We will have done our undergraduate and postgraduate training programs, but with the UTC training that we did, it was a new ball game. It actually added value to what we are doing. And I believe that the goal for training those people was to have that core team in the country where we will have master trainers that will conduct step-down training so that they can share the knowledge that they have gained. And I want to assure you that they have not relented on that. They have continued to do that. Also, coming to um, the uh, AUC, Abel could recall that the African Union did a, an assessment in this country. And when they did an assessment, we have facilitated them meeting almost all key policymakers in this country, including the National Assembly Select Committee on Health. We also met our partners from the Department of State for Health, that is the Ministry of Health, and different other stakeholders from the National Aid Secretariat, key civil society organization. And also, these people were carefully selected and were trained as an epidemiology network of partners that can provide evidence-based data on treatment and prevention activities. They are very active and Abel can attest to the fact that they are regularly, regularly supplying data with regards to what we do whenever the need is there. So therefore, this is highly welcoming. We appreciate this and we believe that it will add value to what we do in the country. Because as a law enforcement, we cannot do it all. We are told to think globally, but act locally in line with the local realities. Then again, I could recall when Family Therapy Association wrote to this agency for them to have a collaboration with us. This was superseded by the COVID-19 regulations that came about, and we could not proceed with the MOU. However, we opened our doors to them and told them that we are very open, open to them and any other institution. Coming to the launch of the event as well, we engaged, and even today in the afternoon, I spoke with Alassan. And I, I told him that we welcome the idea, we appreciate the idea. However, we must also ensure that there cannot be two chapters in the Gambia. There are already people that are trained, and they are not just trained, but they are daily, on daily basis, working in this field. They are receiving people, they are offering treatment services to people. Even if we are to focus or you are to focus on prevention, your interventions have to respond to some of these issues that these people identify when they are treating people. So that this is what is evidence-based. When we are responding to them, we are responding to identified issues and knowing gaps. So as I said, the UTC trainers are involved and I'm sure some of them are watching this program for them to ensure, for them to be assured that they are not left out. They are part of this, and I've also talked to Drame, tax team, reach out to them as the coordinator so that everybody can be on board. Everyone has a role to play. And we understand that, yes, if we are to train and build people's capacity, already we might want to go to the UPC component, but there are already global master's trainers that are trained in the UPC one and the SAT to their ICAP, International Certified Addiction Professional one examination. So therefore, we appreciate this move and we thank and appreciate our good sister here, Kumba. 
I remember when we met with uh, her in the DG's office. The DG was full of praises for everything that she's doing for, to help us in this country, to build the capacity of the agency. Because we understand and we appreciate this, that yes, at the supply suppression component, we should criminalize, criminalize the activity. But at the demand reduction component, prevention, treatment, and care, civil society organizations have a leading role to play when it comes to prevention. Health practitioners have a leading role to play when it comes to treatment. Rather unfortunate that in the Gambia, we continue to say this, you cannot see one civil society organization that can say that we are doing this. And almost every other organization has to rely on the agency for funding when we operate under a very tight budget. Kumba can attest the recent program that we had with the University of the Gambia in the student week. It was a program that targeted more than 5,000, uh, more than 500 university students. We also informed them of the ICCUDDR, that is International Consortium of Universities on Drug Demand Reduction, that they can tap into those. Not to take much of your time, I know that there are other presenters, but we just want to assure you that the Gambia is ready, the Gambia is willing. The drug law enforcement as an institution does not take this thing that we are the only ones that can do it. The traffickers and the dealers don't look at barrier. What they look at is how do they get their market to their, their illicit product to the market. And as such, we cannot have barriers and starting taking ownership that only us can do it, others cannot do it. Everybody needs to be on board. Everybody needs to join the bandwagon. No one needs to be left out. If we do this, definitely we will be able to make an impact. But as I said, let us not leave out these people who have been trained. Because already, after that training, we have the UPT component that we are still knocking on Bill's door so that it can continue. We are able to secure funding from African Union, uh, so from ECOWAS, to have a specialized drug treatment facility because it's not existent in the country. So therefore, there is a lot that has to be done. There's a lot that has to be said, but all cannot be said. But we thank you, we assure you, we appreciate and value our brothers, Alassane, from Family Therapy Association, the Gambia, and everything that they are doing and their desire. And we assure them that our door is open for guidance so that when the act is revised, to introduce community services for first-time offenders for cannabis, so that we decriminalize the component of possession of those smaller quantities, the work that has to be done, these core people who have been trained and they who are going to complement our effort will work together. On that note, thank you very much. And I'll draw the curtain here from now and assure you of the Director General's assurance to work with every other person. Thank you. Thank you very much yeah. for that. Okay. Alessandra, I'll hand over to you. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I just want to say some words. Yeah, we are very, very grateful of what Mr. Seriba has said. Uh, we are here to attire, attire to his guidelines and his support. We thank him very, very, very much again. I think we'll now go to the youth speaker. I can see slides up. Alessana, is he ready to go? Right. Presentation? Yeah, yeah he's, he's ready to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you. This one is is it the read from here? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, thank you, you all. Um, first, I will say, I'll have to admit, there was much um, inspiration that I drew in from um, Mr. Usman Sedeba, the representative from the UNDP, sorry, um, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. And of course, when I heard the Secretary General in his opening remarks said, um, Youths are needed to make sure they are fully participating in the area of substance or drug control. Um, it got me frightened to the extent that I am not too sure if everyone in the Gambia or the youths are ready to take this move. Because there's a need for us to understand that there's a correlation that we have in as much as we're staying together. And that is one reason why we need to come together every single day to make sure that what we want to achieve is done in a collective path. As alluded, I am Jibril Njai, a third year nursing student from the University of the Gambia, currently speaking in my capacity as president of the University of the Gambia Debate Association. 
um, speaking on the role of youths in substance use prevention actually hits on the direct nail because I want to believe that if there's anyone to talk about the responsibility of youths in substance control, it must be a youth. And it's a privilege and I'll thank you all for granting me this opportunity. Um, first, um, there are things that I would want to make clear, which is it is important for us to understand who is categorized as a youth. And the Re European Knowledge Center for Youth Policy uses the age range of 13 and 30 years old to be regarded as a youth. And in my, my free time, I need to understand that this is a huge gap, huge in such a way that each and every one of us are supposed to be very, very careful because spending the age gap of 13 to 30 years old, you ought to be very careful not to fall of any um, illegal path, especially that which has to do with substance use. Um, substance use, on the other hand, is defined as a pattern of harmful anything for mood altering purposes. And substance include drug, cocaine, alcohol, and all the substances that are going to alter oil change and mood in a particular period of time. Um, the role in substance use prevention is an important topic of discussion, considering the fact that elders with great potentials are drifting away from their mental balance because of the time they use particular drug or substances. And I believe um, that was actually got from social media when people were like, why do we have to spend so much time? It is just substance use and not substance abuse. There's a huge difference and it doesn't make any change because one of them leads to the other. If we don't actually prevent ourselves from using substances, then all the users are actually going to turn into abusers and it's going to cause a lot of problems to us, not only the youths, but the society at large. We've seen lives um, of many talented youths that are wasted and many academic pursuits that came to a halt due to the use of drugs or particular substances. Along the street, we've seen boys that will just come in out of nowhere, or we've seen people that are, that are just um, maybe gathered at one side of the road, brewing attire or just in their very rough appearance, no one knows if these people were actually going to serve us in our national parliament, whether they're going to serve us in our state house. These people were going to be potential people that were going to cause or lend a hand in change as far as the nation is concerned. So it all went wrong because there was no proper prevention in the area of drug or substance use. So I believe that this platform today is going to serve as an avenue where we will learn not to keep the knowledge to ourselves, but rather to, stand, um, to extend this knowledge to different people as a guide in relation to substance use. Ladies and gentlemen, I would um, plead if you just allow me to take you through some of the causes of substance use or substance abuse, because I believe if we're about to co-op the area of substance use, we must come back to the causes, because these are where they actually start from. One of them is social issues that results to stress. The other is mental or behavioral health conditions, such as depression, um, anxiety, or ADHD. Also, family history of substance abuse, History of traumatic event, events in one's life, such as death, or an individual losing their last life, which can cause mental retardation or depression. Also, low self-esteem or feeling that you are rejected in a particular society. You've been in a particular place, and you don't feel that you're given the atmosphere that you deserve. So it pushes you to a corner of isolation. So sometimes what you think is, the only alternative that I can do is maybe to smoke or drink as a source of remedy to my own problem. And also the consumption of alcohol, much such as wine, gin, or vodka, also um, novel psychoactive substances or legal highs. An example of this can be the scissors that we use today. Um, in our clubs or maybe in parties, people use scissors. And um, these are like cigarettes, but they're electronic. They have some substances that are placed on it, and then you just have to um, exhume the flames that are coming. In one way or the other, they're causing um, two problems that as far as I know, as a nursing student. The, the flame that you are taking is going to cause cancer, a very high possibility. And of course, the substance that you're taking, if, you are, if they are taking more than this, the required substance is an abuse and it's going to cause a particular mental or behavioral change in your abnormalities. Also, prescribed medicines, um, we are fond of um, drinking medicines that are not prescribed by us, or drinking medicines at a very overdose state. So if a particular medicine is pre prescribed for my younger sister, let's say amoxicillin, it is not for my condition, so I don't have to take it because I just feel like I need to take medication. So this causes a lot of problems as far as substance use is concerned. And the most dangerous cause of substance abuse or substance use is peer pressures. So I think I would deal much into this um, in my subsequent slides. Now, the youth-led initiatives. I am aware that um, youth can be ineffective in substance use prevention, 
and we can cite the United Nations Office of Drug and Crimes. Um, these programs on drug use prevention and especially its use initiative aims at connecting young people from around the world. I believe the most crucial part of this whole agenda is to make sure that people from um, diverse um, settlements in the world will come together, whether online or face-to-face, -face, just to suggest ways by which we can settle our own personal issues, which, may, which might have resolved to the usage of drugs. And of course, the youth initiative empowers young people to be active within their schools and communities to further substance change prevention and health promotion initiatives. Now the focus areas. Banking back on the United Nations Office of, um, of Drug and Crime, um, the initiative encourages to share their experience, ideas, and creativity, and to obtain sub support in creating their use and their health promotion activities. Um, initiatives that is an opportunity for young people to exchange ideas, vision, and different perspective on how to better protect the health and well-being of is to policymakers at the global level. Um, this will boil down to the fact that we're not oblivious, or let me say I am not oblivious, oblivious of the fact that we stay together in schools in our homes, our settlements, or our leisure parks. And instances whereby I might undergo a particular mental problem or feeling that I need to elevate myself, I don't have to go take alcohol as a source of as a solution. But rather, I get myself encouraged or accustomed to the, to, to the instance where I will talk to my peers, maybe one or two people are actually undergoing the same problem that I'm facing. So they might actually give me a better solution than me going on with taking drugs, which are going to cause more harm than good. Now, bottom top approach, very simplified. Um, the only way that we can actually into effect and to have it celebrated is when to have the solutions come from us. And when the solutions are for us, and when the solutions are actually right and they're going to fit the demand or the purpose. Now, the steps that are worth taking, I believe learning about substance use and doing advocacy work is a great role um, that the youth can play since the youth are a conduit of beneficial knowledge for our society. I'll take um, the University of the Gambia Debate Association, for example. Currently serving as the president of the biggest association in the university, on the normally, um, on, a, on, a, on an annual basis, we, we embark on this nationwide talk. And what we do is we talk on contemporary issues that are affecting the life of young people like us so that we can educate them on what best can be done so that we don't use the wrong path. And I can remember last year and year before last, and um, previous cancers actually embarked on irregular migration by then things were so tough with people using the bad way. So a lot of people actually were sensitized to use the better things, let's say laboring or skills rather than going to the, um, to the bad way where they can possibly lose their lives. So the same thing can be done. I believe that the United, um, the United Nations Office of Drug and Crimes can work in collaboration with the National um, Drug Law Enforcement Agency to partner with university students and let's say youth in general, anybody that can go on to further talk to their peers. Because I believe communications are easier when I have the same age range with you. Sometimes someone that is older than me might be explaining something that are far from my perception or my, my gap of, of thinking. So when people of the same age communicate, that is when ideas are digested um, properly than when elders do so. Um, young people should take the lead and control the narrative and ensure that their communities are drug free, which is supposed to be um, a ground settlement for each and every young potential and focused person. Because once one side of the of the of, of the tunnel is affected, we're all affected as a nation. Young people should expose drug peddlers within their neighborhood. We have to um, drop the idea or the perception of you covering for your family member because your family member is on cocaine or on drugs, so you just have to cover for them because you love them. That is not love, to my own belief. I believe you push them um, to, to, to the necessary to the necessary bodies that are going to bring them back to the right path. So that this individual who is supposed to lose their mental path is not going to be corrected to either self in one potential areas where him, you, and the entire family are going to benefit from. And um, they should serve as an example for their young ones so that drug habits will not trickle down to the next generation. Now, the prevention simplified. Contrary to the popular belief, um, prevention is not, a compl it's not as complicated as it may be. Um, I believe, as it is alluded here, if a student will say, no, I'm not taking a cigarette when it is offered, that is prevention at work. But if I am going to say I will not drink a particular al alcohol because I have class early morning tomorrow, that is prevention in practice. So prevention, irrespective of how it will come, let it just come because it is going to protect us from a lot of things. Alongside what we are going to do, I believe 
there's a need for us to understand that we should continue learning, reading and digging grants to make sure that we are knowledgeable, to provide an atmosphere in which we are going to educate people that are not fortunate to be in this hall, people that are not fortunate to have the ability to be sent to schools by their parents. We're sent to schools not to only seek knowledge, but also to be a medium between the knowledge in the wider world to our family and our settlements. So I believe these things, if they are done, we're going to celebrate, or we're going to encounter a little problem in relation to drug or substance use. Um, I have a few recommendations. Um, I know that the drug law enforcement is already done, did a lot because I can I can vividly remember when they have the panelists at the nation at the students in Tendaba. Um, Mr. Usman said about did that already. Some people like um, Mr. Pabak and Sonko were part of the panelists who talked about the dangers of drug or substance use. So all these things connecting, I believe the United Nations um, Office of Drug and Crime will also correlate and make sure that the effects and the area of sensitization and awareness is extended to each and every corner of the Gambia. Um, I believe I did justice, and I would also go on to thank the ex ex um, executive director of ICE of Gambia chapter and his ex entire team to grant me this opportunity to trust me as a young individual that is fit to talk on behalf of the rest of the youth in the Gambia in relation to substance use control. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your um, excellent presentation. Really appreciate it. What I'd like to do now is um, the presentation. Um, we have um, with us um, Vivian Evans or Viv, our excellent um, colleague who's also part of the ISIP board. Um, Viv is um, someone that um, in preparing for this um, launch, um, I discussed it with my colleagues and we decided who, who would be a really good expert to have um, at this launch and straight away um, Livia mentioned Viv and I made sure to reach out to her so we're really pleased that she can join us. Um, she's the chief executive of ADFAM, the national umbrella organization for children and families affected by someone else's use of uh, or misuse of substance. She has a background in drug and alcohol education, prevention, and young people. She is a former member of the Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs, ACMD, and chaired its working group on the implementation of hidden harm. She also chaired the Drug Sector Skills Consortium funded by the Department of Health, this is in the United Kingdom, from 2012 until its conclusion in 2015. Um, so we're so pleased that she can join us. Um, she's an expert and she'll be doing a presentation for us. Um, and the presentation will be focusing on the impact of substance use disorders on the family, its coping mechanisms, recovery issues, and interventions that can be implemented. So I'd like to hand over the time now to you, Viv, for you to go through your presentation with us. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Michael, for your glowing introduction. I hope I can live up to it. And um, just to say to everybody how good it is to be here. Thank you. I feel very privileged for the invitation to speak today. Um, and um, congratulations um, to Gambia on all your efforts to get to where you are now as a member of the ISAP National Chapters family, if I can say that. Um, congratulations, well done, and um, I wish you every success in all your efforts. They're very impressive, and uh, every success to everybody. Um, I, um, I'm going to have to ask Livia, do you have my slides, Livia? Yeah, I can open them for you. Yeah, if you would mind. Um, I'm speaking, as uh, Michael says, I'm the Chief Executive of ADFAM, which is the national English organisation that works very squarely with friends, families, anybody actually, oh, thank you, Olivia, um, anybody affected by somebody else's um, drug or alcohol misuse. So if I could have slide number two, just about ADFAM. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Livia. Um, I'm also um, a board member of ISAP Global, so I'm wearing 
two hats this evening, um, one from ADFAM and one from ISAP Global. Um, ADFAM was set up in 1984 um, by the mother of a heroin user. And we stuck very, very strongly to our principles of listening to people with lived experience, listening to the family members who talk to us, who ring us up, who take advantage of our services. And we very much shape our work on what they tell us is helpful and useful for them. Um, we work in three tracks. We empower families and friends to get the support that they need. And we do that by having services in some of the areas of England. We have workers there with working with families. And we also now have a remote service called AdFam at Home, which is very popular and people can get expert advice, up to six sessions of expert advice and help from uh, one of our workers. And they will learn about, um, for example, addiction, what it means, the cycle of change, for example, um, how to set boundaries with their loved one, um, how to deal with the how to deal with the conflict that that brings. So that's our new remote service that was um, exacerbated, inspired upon us, suppose perhaps the wrong word, by the by the lockdowns and the pandemic. The second track that we work on is to provide training to frontline practitioners. Anybody who works with a family with families that could be a drug or alcohol worker, it could be. Uh, a social worker, somebody working in children's services or, or probation or criminal justice. So anybody who has that within their job remit. And the other, the third area of our work is our res research and our um, work that we then do, we, we produce research and then we try and influence policy makers and decision makers at local and national level in England um, to raise awareness and to um, uh, to to buy to provide better services for families and to uh, raise awareness of their needs. Thanks, Livia. Can I have the next one? Uh, we did some uh, a big uh, commissioned a big poll two years ago, and again just before Christmas, and the results are very much the same. And we find out that one in ten adults in the UK. As five million people are struggling with the drug or alcohol use of someone way they know. And that struggle can impact on them in so many ways, socially, emotionally, physically. And we also know that so many other issues, that often substance misuse, you, you know this better than me, um, isn't just a single problem. It comes often with domestic violence in our country um, and with mental health problems. And uh, just, I should have said this, I should have said this at the beginning, but what I'm going to, I'm talking this evening about the, the, the experiences in England. And I know that um, that's very, um, that, that's our culture, but I, that, that's what I know. And that is what I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you. Uh, thanks, Livia. And so one in that falls down to one in three adults in the UK have been affected by the drug or alcohol use of someone at some point in their life. Might not be current, but at some point they have struggled with, um, with, with, with this problem. Thanks, Livia. Um, Michael mentioned the work that I'd done on hidden harm, which is a big piece of work in the UK on uh, children of drug users. And what we found out was that there were between 250 and 350,000 children who were living with parental problematic drug use. And we know that at least a million children are affected by parental alcohol use. And so often, as I think it's already been mentioned this, af this afternoon, this evening, um, these around prevention and young people's use, this can, this can mean that young people, if they've got parents who are using, young people can use, and often we get into a cycle in some families of intergener what we call intergenerational substance misuse. So you might have three generations who are substance users and to crack that prevention problem uh, is, is, is difficult. And so congratulations to the initiatives in Gambia for, for doing that. Livia, thank you. Um, 
so many people are affected by substance misuse, aren't they? In the middle of this slide, you have the, the focus is the drug or alcohol user, but he or she is affecting immediate family, friends, children, friends, associates, people that they work with, their neighbours, their colleagues, and their whole community. And I think that's already, I recognised um, the remarks that have been made earlier about the uh, impact that substance misuse has on communities. It's the same in, in the UK. Thanks, Olivia. So what is the impact of the substance misuser um, getting them into treatment? Thank you, Olivia. This is one of the next one, please. sorry. If uh, one of the key roles that a family or friend keep, or, uh, can play with somebody who is using is to help them get into treatment, to stay in treatment, and to recover and to maintain their re recovery. So if they can, if a substance user goes into treatment, there's an increased likelihood if the family is around of them staying there, increased chance of recovery, an increased social responsibility and engagement in their community, and increased stability and opportunity. Having said that, our view at ADFAM is that what we have to do, we cannot expect, we have to do is to support the families themselves. We can't expect them to do this without support and understanding. Thanks, Livia. The next slide, please. And so this is what happens um, if a family member gets support and help. More positive relationships in and outside the home. So that means there's more prosperity in society, increased productivity at work. We know that so many people miss work, don't turn up or are just not engaged because they've got problems, there's social and uh, emotional problems of dealing with someone they're living with, let's say, who's got a substance use problem, and they will have improved health and well-being. And that is one of the key impacts that we hope to achieve with all our services. Thank you, Livia. And children, they will have a greater aspiration for the future, increased self-confidence, the ability to deal with change, and we hope improve educational attainment. So many children living with parental substance misuse aren't going to school. Um, or if they do, having said that, when they do, they find that school is a place where they feel safe, because often at home, they just don't feel safe. You'll understand that. Thank you, Livia. And here is just some, here are a few quotes from people that we've talked to over the years. Um, you know, I, a mother of a 47 year old drug user, she handles all his money, she pays all his bills, otherwise he wouldn't do it alone. The wife of a cocaine user, she can't leave him alone with the children, she can't trust him. Uh, parents of cannabis users, my son's not a child, you wouldn't know that, we do everything for him. And the husband of an alcohol uh, dependent uh, wife. He manages, I manage her diary, I drive her to appointments, I keep the house in order. Left to her, we would starve. I think those give some pictures of the kinds of problems that substance misuse brings to, brings to a family and a community. Thank you, Livia. Um, often, families of substance misuse are seen as a carer group. Uh, because they are caring for someone and um, what they need is specialist support. So often um, we have in this country um, care of support groups, so that could be for anyone who's caring for someone, um, let's say, with uh, multiple sclerosis or with a mental health problem, but often carers of someone with a substance misuse problem, they don't want to turn up at these groups because they feel very stigmatised, they feel um, that, that they won't be accepted. And also there is, I think, specialist knowledge that is needed from the people who are leading these groups and running these services. You do need to know your stuff about substance misuse and about families. And many, many people need, bar need to overcome these barriers to access in health. Thanks, Livia. They often don't think they deserve help in their own right. They feel very embarrassed, very prejudiced, and society prejudices them, as it prejudices drug users. It applies to families too. 
Um, the kind of support that we offer in this country, not just us, but other groups and other organizations, um, one-to-one -one practitioner support, um, where people can offload their stress and distress. And as I've mentioned often, there is a barrier to actually accessing groups like that uh, initially, um, which is another reason why we set up our AFAM at Home Remote Service, Zoom service. What families need is information and guidance and signposting to mainstream services and peer opportunities. You'll know as well as me how um, important and supportive being able to talk to somebody in the same situation is to get their advice and support, but also to reduce the isolation. When you feel that there's somebody else in the same boat as you, it helps. Thanks, Livia. Oh, I've done that. Sorry. Can you? Uh... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, it's OK. Uh, these are the kind of I mentioned before, the kinds of issues that we raise in our groups and online and in our um, online services, how to set boundaries. What are the treatment options? Because so many family members just haven't got, understandably, haven't got a clue about what drug treatment or alcohol misuse treatment is all about. They learn about their personal well-being, how to keep safe how they can look after themselves. They learn to understand recovery. They learn about enabling because so often a family member can quite unwittingly enable someone to continue with their drug misuse. Um, they learn about how they can manage conflict and improve relationships within the family. Um, I don't know in your country, but in our country, there is, we do have uh, naloxone, antidote to heroin uh, misuse and um, or overdose I'm sorry and there are many drug services that will um, prescribe that give naloxone to family members and teach them how to use it as a preventive measure. Thanks Livia. Um, stereotypes in our country I mentioned there are so many images and language that stigmatizes drug users and also the families of drug users. And it's a real barrier that at AdFam, and working with other partners in the UK, we are trying to raise awareness of, we're trying to beat down those stereotypes and beat down those barriers, because we believe that it's only by doing that can family members actually ever, well, and drug users get the support that they need. Thanks, Livia. So I've mentioned, um, how distressing living with an alcohol user or a drug user in the family is, increased stress, likelihood of mental health problems, an increase in trauma and what we call, um, well, ad adverse childhood experiences, which are themselves can be a cause of substance misuse later on in life, physical illness, isolation and stigma, that relationship breakdown, and then it can lead to even bigger problems. Uh, Drug misuse because it's um, illegal, it's illegal. So many children, yes, children and families become the victims of crime. And I've met so many family members who try and keep their loved one away from drug dealers, will actually pay for the drugs themselves and find themselves in financial difficulties. There's the involvement of the police, social care, local, the authorities. And family members feel like failures often. They feel it's me, particularly if they're um, a parent, they feel that they've been a bad parent. That's why their child is maybe using drugs, for example. Um, and um, couples have huge amount of conflict around this. It can break down relationships and they feel that they, they, they failed in some way. So that adds to their distress and to their, to their distress. Thank you, Livia. So what can, uh, what can we do? Um, what we say to families is you can focus on the necessities, think about medication, think about uh, helping yourself, think about cutting down on the harm by setting boundaries in your, in your um, home, focus on your own uh, personal care and well-being and take care of your family. Look at the family, don't be beholden to the substance user. We know substance users can be very clever and manipulative, I'm afraid I'm, I have to say that they can be. Um, 
and what we say is think about yourself first think about your family around you um and don't just be seen as somebody who is um you know you need to you need help as well don't just be the one who's giving it all to the person with the problem thanks livia i think that's oh yeah that's one of our um, that's just one of the uh, link to just one of one of our um videos on youtube but thank you very much for thank you very much for listening everybody i very much appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and wish you well again in all your endeavors thank you very much Viv, for the excellent presentation really appreciate it and um really pleased that you were able to join us so thank you once again for your presentation thank you we would now like to go to um dr abel basutu for the african union where we've um, saved the the best for last um he will be um speaking to us representing the african union and um i'll just give a, a brief um um, bio about um, Dr. Basutu. Um, he's a program specialist with extensive experience in policy formulation and advocacy, management and implementation of a technical cooperation projects in diversified development fields. He holds a PhD in business administration and previously worked for the World Food Program, um, WHO, and the International Labour Organization. He currently works as a senior drug control program officer for the African Union, where he's been working within the African Union Commission for the, the past 10 years. Um, and through his intervention, he's been able to focus on the misuse of information and communication technologies, which prop up drug trafficking and related crime in Africa. Um, and uh, I've had a personal opportunity to work closely with Abel, and he's doing a great work with the African Union. And we're really looking forward to his um, presentation, which will be focusing on what the African Union is doing to help member countries in the areas of drug prevention, treatment, and recovery. So I'll hand over the time now to you, um, Abel, for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, th th thank you very much, uh, Michael. I hope that uh, my presentation is on the screen. Michael, can you confirm? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you to previous speakers for articulating um, key issues at hand and uh, what we need to do on the continent to address the challenge um, of drugs. At a time, modeling projections are, do not paint a very good picture um on drug use on the continent as the saying goes no one can whistle a symphony uh, it takes an orchestra and to me that says it all about um teamwork uh bill and inl um thank you for for your commitment to drug demand reduction efforts globally uh, my sister madame kumba maturin diop of yeno dc uh, thank you my sister vivian evans Adfam, thank you, Mr. Said Bao, our DDR focal person in the Gambia. Uh, thank you. Uh, ISAP Global, represented here by Livia, Olivia, Michael, and the team. And to our new baby, um, ISAP Gambia, uh, congratulations, and we are happy to work uh, with you. Uh, Jibril, Jai, uh, youth, we cannot harness the demographic dividend in Africa unless we address substance use disorders amongst the youth. So I'll just try to quickly go through my presentations. Um, I'm conscious of time. Um, just by way of introduction, um, the African Union is a continental body consisting of um, 55 member states that make up countries on the African continent. It was officially launched in uh, 2002 as a successor to the organization of African unity. And the goal of the AU is to promote political and economic integration, deliver prosperity, inclusive growth, and sustainable development through its several organs. And the African Union a Commission, which is headquartered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, is the administrative organ and executive secretariat of the African Union. And uh, its primary role can be 
summarized in those points that I included the normative and policy support, uh, continental coordination of policy implementation, analysis, research and evidence, and technical assistance and capacity building through our strategic and multilateral partnerships. Now, um, going a little bit deeper on normative and um, policy support, the AU policy organs have been very active and a number of uh, frameworks have been developed, which include the African Union Continental Minimum Quality Standards for Drug Treatment of 2012, the Common Africa Position on Controlled Substances and Access to Pain Management Medication of 2012, Addis Ababa Declaration on Scaling Up Balanced and Integrated Responses Towards Drug Control in Africa of 2014, the Common Africa Position for UNGAS of 2016, whose commitment for stipulates that drug use and drug dependence must be treated as a public health issue with socio-economic causes and consequences, and people who use drugs must be offered support, treatment, and protection. We have again the African Union Agenda 2063, uh, which is um, the African Union's uh, blueprint for socioeconomic transformation on the continent. And then decisions and declarations of various sessions of a specialized technical committee on health, population, and drug control for those years that I indicated. That is the ministerial. Um, meeting there of ministers of health population and drug control and what i want to highlight um, as a policy framework is the african union plan of action on drug control and crime prevention for the period 2019 to 2023 uh, which uh, was preceded by four continental frameworks so it is the fifth and uh, its overall goal being to improve health security and social economic well-being of people in Africa by addressing drug trafficking and problematic drug use in all its forms and manifestations and preventing the onset of drug use. So those are the nine um, priority areas of the plan of action. And you can see there that it is uh, multi-sectoral balanced and uh, integrated and we do have uh, the drug um, demand reduction pillar there in the middle so uh, pillar one of the african union plan of action um, is on measures to address drug demand reduction and addressing health issues associated with the drug use in member states um, and the objective being of course to address drug use uh, um, disorders prevention treatment and care as well as um, harm reduction and when you look at uh, the the prevention uh, uh, component there we are looking at uh, facilitating evidence-based um, prevention science in in within uh, member states um, we are also looking at um, promoting development and uh, implementation of um, treatment curricula. Uh, of course, working with um, uh, partners, we include Colombo Plan, um, ISAP, the International Consortium of Universities in Drug Demand Reduction, and, and so on. And um, I previously also alluded to HAM reduction um, associated, reducing harm associated with the drug use based on the comprehensive package developed by ENODC and WHO, and um, also implementation of alternatives to punishment for drug use, promoting proportionality in sentencing for drug offenses and provision of services for people who use drugs in conflict with the law. The second area that I mentioned that the African Union uh, is involved in um, relates to continental coordination of uh, policy implementation. Um, we do participate uh, in interagency uh, drug demand reduction working groups. Um, 
we, we are also a part of the global dialogue for drug demand reduction, um, which brings uh, focal persons in drug demand reduction from Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean, uh, thanks to the facilitation of INL. And um, we encourage uh, formation of an interministerial of interministerial coordination mechanisms at member state level so that the left hand knows what the right hand is, is, is doing. And we also facilitate um, the establishment of uh, national focal persons and agencies uh, for drug demand reduction at member states. And um, Mr. Saidiba, we know, as I said, is our drug demand reduction focal person for the Gambia. We also do monitoring and evaluation of our implementation of the continental, various continental frameworks on drug control. Okay, the third area <clears throat> uh, pertains to analysis, research, and uh, evidence. And I want to mention here that um, uh, we do have a continental drug surveillance system, which we call the Pan-African Epidemiology Network on Drug Use, which was established in 2016 to provide consolidated strategic information to facilitate um, legislative policy and operational responses in drug demand reduction. And this um, continental surveillance system draws its information from national uh, drug epidemiology networks, uh, which were established in member states and the Gambia uh, <clears throat> very much um, is part of this initiative. There is an active network in Gambia that supplies reports to the African Union Continental Drug Surveillance System, which then um, creates an evidence base uh, for policymakers to address health and social and economic consequences of alcohol and, and, and drug use. And I want to mention that uh, as of 31st December 2021, uh, national drug epidemiology networks from 32 out of the 55 AU member countries were linked to the Pan-African Epidemiology Network on drug use. And then the fourth area that uh, we are involved in is uh, providing technical assistance and uh, capacity building um, at national and sub-regional levels. And uh, here we do have uh, annual continental consultations for drug demand reduction national focal persons, uh, which is a kind of a peer review um, mechanism, uh, as well as um, a mechanism for sharing experiences uh, and benchmarking. We also do training of um, national drug epidemiology focal persons and using our strategic and multilateral partnerships, um, we leverage uh, technical capacity um, through ENODC, WHO, ISAP, Colombo Plan, and other organizations. So just, just a quick overview, a uh, very snapshot uh, of a quick overview. Uh, in terms of prevention, um, we have seen a gradual adoption of uh, evidence-based prevention strategies in member states. Um, but of course, more needs to be done in terms of uh, professionalizing uh, prevention workshops. But what is encouraging is that uh, there are school-based uh, prevention programs in some countries, notably Nigeria, Egypt, Morocco, and Mauritius. And um, community-based uh, interventions also are steadily increasing. And um, parental skills training is in demand, and South Africa has developed a manual for parenting skills training. In countries like Egypt, we have seen them using positive role models um, who speak against drugs, like uh, footballer Mohamed Salah, whom I am sure many people are familiar with. Then in terms of uh, treatment, <clears throat> capacity for substance use disorder treatment, rehabilitation, recovery, and social integration has improved. But from our assessment, it is below a necessary threshold to effectively respond to treatment needs. And um, countries, of course, are doing their best to develop manuals with guidelines on treatment and rehabilitation with the assistance of our partners 
ENODC, WHO, ISAP, and so on and so forth. What I can report here as well <clears throat> is that um, um, the, the UTC, which uh, Mr. Saidi Ba uh, uh, mentioned, so with AU facilitating access to member states, the Colombo um, Plan Advisory Program has initiated training of trainer initiatives in 24 countries in Africa based on UPC and UTC. And a number of uh, national trainers have been trained, and that is very much encouraging. And therefore, we encourage such efforts. In terms of um, harm reduction, we have seen a gradual uh, adoption of harm reduction approaches in some countries, Kenya, uh, Mauritius, Tanzania, Senegal. And uh, what the African Union urges in terms of harm reduction is implementation of WHO uh, UNODC comprehensive package of uh, health services for people who inject drugs. Lastly, what I want to urge member states is to strengthen implementation of all the nine pillars of the AU plan of action on drug control to counter the worsening situation uh, concerning drug availability, use and negative consequences, in particular prevention, treatment and care, and to always, to always put people at the center of all national drug control policy responses through concrete investments in drug control architecture. So in a nutshell, um, I, I wanted, this is what I wanted to share with you, but uh, this is my email. We can uh, correspond and we can share information uh, off air. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Uh, congratulations to the Gambia, and we are here to work with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abel, for the excellent presentation. Um, and once again, thank you to all those that have given the presentations already. What we'd like to do now is um, we, we have some time for Q&A or some questions and answers. So Alasana, I want to go over to you first. Um, I know you're with our colleagues um, on the ground um, and you're meeting there. Um, can you um, let us know if they have any questions for the, present, the presenters? that um, we, can, we could ask them maybe two or three questions that they have on the ground about the presentations that have been given. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, from Oxia, no question. That's fine. Yeah. If, there, if there are no questions from colleagues on the ground, that's okay. We we have a, a couple of questions. Okay. Wait, a, uh, wait a second. Someone wants to ask something. Uh -huh. Come here, I cannot, I'm not I'm having to be told. Come over. You can sit here and ask. Yeah, he can sit there and ask. That's fine. <laughs> um, I said a situation we are in, um, personnel in a law enforcement agency, uh, mm -hmm. also drug, drug addicts or are also taking drugs. How can you report short cases when you have an issue with someone who is involved in drugs in your community? Then you want to report, you know that that particular person you are going to report is also a big part of drugs addicts. It's also, it's also taking drugs. So how can you report those kind of cases in such a situation? Okay, so just to okay. understand, um, this, um, the, the people you're referring to are, involved in um, um in drug treatment but they're also addicts is that what you're mentioning is that your question yeah yeah the people that are they, like for example the police um let me make an instance for example the police an officer who is charged with responsibility to hold people who are taking drugs is also an addict or is also taking drugs how can you report short cases how can you report such cases um what I'd like to do, um, I think that's a good question. Um, Honorable Sadie, but do you want to chip in on that one, please? Thank you very much, and thanks to my Sinaronia brother there. One thing is very clear as far as the Gambia is concerned, and as far as this is a program targeting the Gambia, nobody's above the law. 
And we can proudly say here that in this country, in Gambia, right now, as we speak, this agency is the only institution in this country that has introduced drug tests for all of our staffs. And it's regularly done. Five were found wanting and they were dismissed. Again, coming to your question, it's clear that you know the trafficking trend, when you look at the supply suppression component, we know that there are issues regarding traffickers trying to use people who work within law enforcement, not just to abuse the drugs, but also to traffic it. But nobody is above the law. We have a very open door policy. There is a hotline for anyone who is caught and officers have been dismissed, including, I will not even feel ashamed to say that, but even including our own staff. And these are on record and it's in the media. So therefore we have a zero tolerance policy. But notwithstanding, within the country, we've always said this, people have to understand there are avenues that are available for oversight. There is a National Assembly Select Committee on Defense and Security. This agency is having a governing board, and this governing board comprises of almost all the sister security services, the Department of Social Welfare, the Secretary General and the Head of the Civil Service, the Permanent Secretary the Ministry of Interior, uh, the Director of Health Services, a representative from the private sector. And these are very highly respectable people. And the chairman of this agency is Gay So, who is one of the renowned human rights lawyers in this country, heading the International Human Rights Agency across Africa. So therefore, the avenues are there. There is the avenue also, if you are looking at the Gambia, because ENS is a global conference, but it's a Gambia issue. I have to give a, a venue for where you can seek redress. There is the National Audit Office. There is the Office of the Ombudsman. These are all bodies that have oversight uh, responsibility over institutions. So nobody is above the law. And as I said, for me, in our radio programs that we run, in our television program that we run, we say that we have open door policy. If you are aware of anyone engaged in it, come to us, give us the information and hold us to account. And all those who have been found wanting have been dealt with. So our hotline is 1213-1213. So if you have any information on that, you can bring it to us and we can handle it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Sadiba, for, for that um, answer. I think it was very appropriate to, to go to you for, for that. Um, Alasana, do you have any other um, on the ground that may have a question? Um, if not, um, we've got a couple of questions here that we would like to give to the, the presenters and those that are joining us virtually. Yeah, we are OK now. No other question. OK, thank you. So um, the question I have here um, the, um, for um, UNODC, um, I, I don't know if um, Honorable um, Kumba is still with us, but um, the question I have was, um, what programs do you currently have in um, the Gambia taking place? It would be good to get a bit of information on the good work that's happening in the Gambia. So um, I don't know if you're still there, um, Honorable Kumba. Um, are you still there with us? Yes, uh, Michael, I'm still here. Sorry, I turned off my camera because of the mm -hmm. connection issue. No, no um, worry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the questions. Um, actually, in the Gambia, we we were having um, training activities for law enforcement officers, but also adding now health workers that deal with drug demand reduction. We just started a project back on the 26th of February with DLAG, uh, trying to do some sensitization for the youth, like Mr. Sediba mentioned. But we have also engaged the Ministry of Youth and Ministry of Health so that we can see how to do more work in the drug demand reduction aspect with DLAG. We are also supporting the Ministry of Justice in the update of the Drug Law Act, so that there'll be a revision of the, the act, so that they'll decriminalize some of the, the, the minor offenses that are related to drug. We are also trying to set up some committees that will deal with the drug trafficking, and it will include all the law enforcement agencies. Actually, we are having a meeting of national stakeholders on the 31st of March, to discuss those issues and the setup of a tra trans, um, transnational crime unit that will deal with drug trafficking, illicit trafficking, and have an aspect that will look at the drug demand reduction in the Gambia. Thank you. 
Thank you very much um, for, for that answer. I think um, for me, it's always good to know what our partners are also doing on the ground. And, and that's also a question that we, uh, we have here for um, AU. I know um, Abel, you went through your presentation about what is happening on the continental side of things when it comes to um, drug related activities. So it'd be good to hear more about the, the programs that um, African Union is actually doing with um, the drug agency. It'd be good to know a bit more about that um, and to um, see how that, that is progressing within countries. So it'd be good to have information on that one as well. Uh, uh, <clears throat> thank, thank, thank you very much, um, Michael. We work with um, um, coordinating agencies in the member states, and um, as uh, Livia mentioned uh, in her opening remarks um, uh, about the global conference, uh, the seventh ISAB global conference in Abu Dhabi, we are actually going to convene a meeting of um, national drug demand reduction and epidemiology for our persons there, thanks to INO, where uh, we are going to deliberate on a number of issues uh, related to prevention, treatment, and care, and in particular, uh, making better drugs, uh, better drugs data in Africa a reality. Um, we know, for instance, uh, and uh, Madame Kumba is here, that um, the response um, of um, African member states to the ARQ is low. So we are engaging UNODC there to try and find out uh, how we can um, contribute to the improvement of um, responses for the ARQ, making uh, better drugs uh, data a reality in Africa. We have also been um, instrumental in uh, compilation of um, compendium uh, of good practices in uh, drug use disorders uh, prevention, treatment, and care, uh, which serves as a guide uh, or a benchmark for other member states to follow. But essentially, yes, we do a, a lot of capacity building and uh, leverage technical assistance to member states through our various uh, strategic and multilateral partnerships. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Abel, for that. Um, I think um, that um, meeting taking place in, in Abu Dhabi will be really crucial um, because we'll be able to allow for the drug agency to showcase the good work that you're doing with the AU. So really looking forward to that taking place um, when we're having the, the ICEP conference. And speaking of the conference as well, I have a last question here for, for ICEP Global. This is for my colleague, Livia. Um, now that we've, we've undertaken the launch and ICEP, the Gambia, and, and are part of the, the ICEP family, it would be good to sort of understand what the desires are for ICEP Global, what sort of activities or things that ICEP Global believes would be very useful for I said the Gambia moving forward to enable it to grow and develop as as you as we know it's a, a baby at the moment so we we want to see how best we can nurture it to to grow and become a, a strong man or woman in the field that we operate in so uh, it would be good to get your thoughts on that Livia yes thank you very much Michael and um well thank you first of all to all of you I think it's been a great launch and it was exciting to be part of it. Maybe you can also send us some photos from the in-person event. It's a shame that we cannot see. I would like to see everyone there in person as well. So if you could share some photos with us, we will also post that on the ICE website. And yes, um, I think the um, like Michael, we have been working, as you know, with them very much in the kind of the past months on you know their work plan and their activities. And as for all of our national chapters, it's really about the local needs. It's that's where there is a need for national chapters because we as ISEP work on the international level, right? And we rely so heavily in these countries like the Gambia, where we have a national chapter on them telling us what do the drug demand reduction professionals in 
your country need, right? And you have shared today, you know, the trainings happening, the work that you're doing together with the government, that you're doing together with the international partners, with the African Union, with your UNODC. And through that, we would really hope and we hope to support that, um, that we can all come together and strategize more with how can we support you with, you mentioned the, <coughs> the trainings earlier as well. So I think focusing on the training needs in your country, both on the prevention and also the treatment and recovery support side. And, but also at some point, if you're interested working with our other partners, for example, with the with ICUDDR on building joint collaboration projects on research studies, that would be another aspect that we would be very interested in supporting you. And I think that's also um, a great benefit of being part of the ISAP national chapter family that you can now connect to the national chapters in your region, but also to the national chapters around the world. So we're really looking forward to welcoming you to uh, in, in Abu Dhabi to uh, the uh, conference and then sitting down, we'll have a two day national chapter meeting with all of them where you know we sit down together and that um, I said the Gambia can bring your ideas to the table and discuss them with the other national chapters. So um, thank you again, everyone. And um, it's, it's been really a pleasure for me and the whole ISIP national chapters um, and like kind of the whole national chapters coordination team to be part of that launch. So thank you. Very much, Livia. Mr. Sadiba, um, I know you have your hand up. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. And we know that we were scheduled to give a presentation we're expecting that when that had happened, it will have, will have given you an overview on the situation on the ground with regard to both the supply suppression and the drug demand reduction. This will give partners a clear picture of what the reality is on the ground. And as I said, if we do not clearly identify the problem and assess what exists, whatever response we give might be proven to have worked in other areas, but may not necessarily work within the local context. So therefore, we are always very available. As we said, this needs a balanced, integrated, multi-sectorial approach. Drugs do not exist in isolation and cannot be curbed in isolation. It cut across. But just to add to uh, the question that was geared towards uh, Dr. Basudu, we are not African Union, but then from their engagement here, we were supposed to give them update on this. I think, Doctor, you could recall when you came here, one of the key partners that we engaged was the National Aid Secretariat, NAS. And um, the Epidemiology and National Observatory was launched, and they have been meeting regularly from the training that you had. The EUTC trainers even had a training for them that this is helping them to feed into the data. Another outcome of one of their engagement was to do a research within the population of injectable drug users. And uh, Action Aid the Gambia is funding this to look at, because we might say the Gambia, perhaps we'll say, we don't have much problem with regard to PWIDs or IDUs, right? But others looked at it from this perspective. If we give you our function, you know that the agency is mandated to conduct a lot of research, study the situation, and advise the minister on the availability on issues and all what have you. So we engage the research unit at the University of the Gambia to try to conduct research among that population. Because the Gambia, we all know, is a tourism destination. And uh, some of the justification and things that we looked at is, somebody could be someone who is under that condition. That is, perhaps is HIV positive. We know the correlation with hepatitis, and then with HIV AIDS, especially among the IDUs and the PWIDs. And there's the likelihood of this person coming to the country and having a time with someone who is within the population and the likelihood of the multiplying implication. So that's just to add that, that observatory network that you had set up in this country and that engagement with the National Aid Secretariat gave birth to this present current research that the Action Aid the Gambia will be funded. That is just to add to, to show some of the benefit of some of these things that we've been doing. But on a nutshell, to give the position of the government, the, Dr. Kumba said something. We are working on a complete overhaul of the Drug Control Act. And with this, there is a recommendation for uh, community services for first-time offenders. And if this is going to happen, it means that there will be a lot of work with regard to managing probation, with regard to managing the community service, with regard to, uh, how they call it, offering uh, psychosocial support services. But we all know that using the ICD or the DSM, 
the involvement and the addiction level could be different. So it's one thing to have good laws, but it's something totally different to have the infrastructures that can help you attain those laws. So therefore, the Gambia, by extension, the government and this agency relies on the expertise and support of partners. We cannot do it alone. And I always say this in meeting, the chain is as strong as the link. If there is a weakened link, they will capitalize on it. The chain is as strong as the link. Let us maintain this link. Let us cross borders, let's cross boundaries, and drugs are transnational. This is why Kumba said we are working on setting up the TOKU, Transnational Organized Crime Unit. Because in as much as we talk about the demand, we cannot forget the supply. As long as there is a supply in the market, there will be demand for it. And we don't have any specialized, let's be clear here, we don't have any specialized drug treatment facility in this country. The only facility we have is Tanka Tanka. And I could be addicted to drug, I'm not necessarily psychotic. And we all know that the stigma, stigma that is associated with taking people to some of these homes. So I will not take much of your time or do another presentation again, but I would thank you and assure you of our support, our collaboration and our partnership for our collective vision to ensure that we have a drug-free world or minimize the availability and the usage of drugs at a very minimal level. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for those um, powerful words. Really appreciate that. Um, and um, we're very pleased that you're working with the national chapter and we, we hope that we can continue to go together and address all these issues. But from, from my side, um, thank you very much, Alasana, for allowing me to be a part of the launch. Um, we're so thankful for everyone that's um, done the presentation, those that have spoken, and um, we'll continue to work together to build on the good work that you've been doing. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like to hand the time over to you um, for your concluding remarks and for conclusion of the launch today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We are glad that we are finally able to launch Eyes of Gambia and then uh, the launching have went well, the uh, webinar too. Yeah, we uh, can't thank uh, uh, drug law enforcement agency Abel and Livia Peel. We thank you all. He said that now from here the engagement will continue from the local level to the international level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, that concludes. Uh, so thank you all very much for, for joining and, and a big thank you to everyone there in the Gambia. We, we hope you will meet someday um, in person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Doc. Thank everybody. Thank Olivia, Michael, everybody. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Take care. Bye-bye.